And I want to try to bring you to that position today. And John 3.16, it states that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Which one of you would give your only begotten son? Only begotten son. So that the world might be saved through him. And he took me to the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Pastor Christine, if you get that, that text. Is it at least worth up? No, they're not. Okay. Uh, uh, I won't keep you long because I, I mean I won't keep the, the, the Sunday school long, but I must build this foundation so that everyone will know where we are. Okay? Where God has taken us. So that that love is so powerful. It's not it's not physical, it's not touchy feely love. Amen? It's a love that does this now, and I want to bring this to your attention. And, and it, came, it comes out of the scriptures that we use so powerfully in marriage, which I quote over your life, in your life. Praise the Lord. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. I believe we can start at maybe the 20th verse or the 23rd verse. Is the Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So before they, 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 they become one, they have to pray. Amen. You see that? In, in the love of God, you, you have to be a praying people. And, and, and the thing is that what is so real about it, that Jesus Christ himself, all the disciples, the apostles, the prophets, they had. And if they didn't pray, they would never, ever affect their world for Christ. So then if you don't pray, your world will never change. And then the world we live in will never change. Do you, do you understand that? So before Christ himself ever married himself or died for you and I, he prayed. How do I know that? Because I go to John 17 and he says, he prayed to the Father. That which you've given me now, I want them to receive the glory. I want them to be just like me. And Jesus, if you're just like Jesus, you will have a prayer life. Amen. Take my jacket off. Thank you. Thank you. Don't take me out. Now, just think about it, that if Jesus would have never prayed, you and I would have never been here. Amen. Because he had to receive the instructions of his Father in order to perform and to do what he had to do for us. In order to change and affect this world for Christ. Presence of God. 
Thank you, sir. Praise him. Praise him. So what is what is this John John three sixteen? God so loved this love that that God is talking about that you would lay down your life to promote that person or persons to the level that they need to be, and that's what I do for my wife because Jesus did the same thing for me. Amen. Because I'm His bride. Yes. Yeah. And he gives whatever he can. He gives of himself for me. Now look at what he says here in this text. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as now, unto the Lord. Now notice that he doesn't tell the wife as a commandment to love, but he commands his wife to be obedient. So you're the wife of Christ, so you must be obedient to your own husband. Amen. Who's your husband? Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So then are we being obedient to our husband? Please read. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So then if God's your covering, if you have a covering, then the angels are set on assignment because of your covering. Uh. So the, if you're not in the will of God, and you're more focused on the, the things that are going wrong in your life, then you're not in the will of God. You're in sin. <clears throat> Wives, obey your own husbands. You must submit to Jesus Christ. I cannot love this woman. I cannot love you without loving God. I must submit to my husband now. Amen. My provider, my caretaker, Amen. my source, my everything. Amen. See, you, the reason why you're here today is because of him. He still has an assignment for you. That's right. For you. That's right. You may not be able to be here on Mondays, but you can pray. That's right. Amen. That's true. You may not be able to go on the boardwalk with us, but you can pray. Amen. Oh, I can't go, so you don't do anything but stay in the work in the place that you are. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Come on. Make it plain. Thank you for forgiveness. Please read the next verse. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Go ahead. Husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for You see that? That's what it says, doesn't it? He gave himself for the church. So guess what you're supposed to do? The, the church is still out there. The church is still out there. We have church here, but the body of Christ is still out there. There's a lot of people that are not saved. There's some people in your own household, even in your own family, that are not saved. Are you giving your life for it? Are you giving love to make sure that you're laying down your life? To This is love. Amen. To make sure that they reach their destiny. Glory. That's what Christ did for us. How did he do it? He prayed for us. He died for He died to himself. He said, I laid down my life for my friends. Church, we have to lay down our lives for our friends. Amen. Next verse, please. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So then we have to prepare the body of Christ to Christ without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. How do you do it? You sacrifice. You sanctify it. How do you sanctify? It's said by what? The word of God. So how do we do that? We pray. We don't try to move people because of positions and, 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 and who we are and finances and all the rest of those things. But we do it through the prayer of the word of God. The, the homologic of God's word. We pray God's word. Amen. Man. How great. That man, how, how wonderful is that? That God would 
would use us to, to move forth in his glorious work. Then, then the other thing that, that came to me, which really blessed me, is this. My God. I, I have, you know, God took me on, I mean, from an all over place today. I, I'm, I'm just all right, sure. It's all right. Now, he says in Matthew 21, verses 9 through 16, when he made his triumphal entry, when he was going on his triumphal entry, he made this statement. People were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. How many of you have been crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna? You know what that Hosanna means? It means, help us, Lord. See, the Lord will hear you but not just for you. What you've been given in the, in the spirit of God, the ability of God, the mysteries of God, to understand and to know those things are not just for you. Say that, please. They're not just for me. So what did he do first and foremost before he even took and went into the garden and all the rest of those things and died on Calvary's cross. What did he do? He made sure that prayer would be in his house. You, you're crying for help. Well, here's how I'm going to help you so that you can come to me for help. Listen to what he says. Nine. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna. To the son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Yes. Hosanna in the highest. Yes. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer. Hold up. He went where? Into the temple. What did he do? He drove out everything that didn't belong there. How many of y'all have been saved? When you got saved, did God drive everything out? And then he claimed it to be what? His house. This is his house. This is his temple. And it should be a what? House of prayer. For what? All of them. We're not on the board here. Everybody. He said, My house should be called a house of prayer. For what? All of Everybody. Even your enemy. You have to get this. The reason why the world is in such chaos and everything's not going the way that God planned it to be, and not the way that we know it to be, is because we're not praying for all people. There's a great change coming into this area. And I don't know about you, but I, I know within my spirit God has shown me. And the way that God has shown me and he's proven it to me because just yesterday I have had six pastors tell me we're ready. Praise God. And then the Lord showed me through uh, our outreach ministry how harmonious and how blessed you guys work with other people. Yes. Yes. That the time has now come. Yes. That God is about ready to bring revival, but it won't happen until you pray. Okay. Why God is ready to bring forth the harvest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's ready to bring revival. Yes. He's ready to bring a revolution yes. to Atlantic City. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's why God is allowing the people to suffer. Why? Because God's preparing the hearts for us to go in and change them. My God. My God. But whether you got saved yesterday or last week, last year, or the year before, God said, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, he has ordained strength to still defend it. Whether you got saved just yesterday or renewed your spirit today, God is saying that out of your mouth he has given you power to steal the enemy. And nothing by any means shall come nigh you. Ty, in his time, stated that, hey, you know, six months is already here. We're six months into the year. Time is short. God said, for those of us that believe, that the, the, the days would be shortened. Why? So that 
that we're not suffering with the world. But we're here to change the world. And it's not just because you got a degree. It's not just because you went to Bible school. It's because you got the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one that prayed for you. So in their house, this temple, this temple, touch yourself. This temple, God has placed in this house healing.
Jesus said, after, I mean, before he said this in John 15 and 16, he says, listen, listen. He said, man, you've asked nothing in my name. But from this point on, you will ask the Father in my name and he will do it. Why? Because he paid the price. So then the price that you have to pay is prayer. That's all you have to pay is prayer. And when you ask in Jesus' name, that's the authority to figure that got you what you need. Ah, that's the signature, yes. Yes. You can't leave Jesus out of the picture because he paid the price. Yes. Amen. Because of that, it's just like in the in you watch these old Roman uh, uh, movies and so forth, and they seal the letter that they sent out. Well, that's what happened to Jesus. Because he, he made that sure. He said, he said when Jesus got baptized by the Spirit, so he could give you the Spirit, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Amen. You see? So then the seal for you and I, for what we ask in God, it shouldn't be for our selfishness. Come on. It should be for others. It should be change this world. Yes. Amen. Amen. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will do it. How many y'all believe that? How many of you have prayed that? Amen. How many got what you want? That's right. Now God is trying to give you what you want, and He wants you to do what He wants. You want your ways to become His. Ways and his thoughts, your thoughts. Say so. Say so. And this way, so. the word of God will not return void. Say that. Will not return void. Now, the thing is that we all have to be on one accord. So that's why we need prayer targets. You understand? God is about ready to make a great move in this county, in Atlantic County. Why? Because we've asked for it. Yes. And he sees that our hearts are right. But if the hearts of the people are not right, he can't use you. Jesus. You'll just be dra dragging along with somebody else's skirt, skirt tail. I don't want to be there. I want to be in the battle. Come on. And the way that we battle is through prayer. Yes. That's why he dressed you. That's why he clothed you. Yes. Woo! God. Okay, please read. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Wait a minute, so how are you going to do that and you're, and you're still here? In the Spirit. In the Spirit. In the spirit. And how's that through prayer? That's right. And His Word. It's yeah. through prayer. That's how you get into His presence. Yeah. His presence. Yeah. Fullness of uh, joy. I don't like the music today. Hey. I don't like what happened today. What so about you? You could have kept your feelings out.
spelling that word. Please read. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you can't get it any other way, brother and sister. And the only way that you can come to the Father is by what? The, the, the way you like, your lifestyle. He said, I'm the way. Amen. So if you're the way, then you receive the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Well, let me prove it to you. Galatians 2.20 says that the life you now live, you now live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved you and gave himself for you, yet not I, but Christ. What's he doing to me? What's he doing to me? He lives in you. Amen? So then, I am the way. The only way that you get is that you know and recognize that I am Adonai. Lord, owner, possessor of everything. Yes. Even you. That's right. Yes. Is he your owner? Yes, he is. Then become his servant. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Next verse, please. Jesus. I mean, what's the other part of that verse? I'm sorry. It says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You got to go by him, right? So then the first thing that we have to do is surrender. There's four things that I really need for you to start praying in your life, amen? For yourself. Write them down. Y'all got those uh, notebooks you gave me? Well, they're in storage. <laughs> we just didn't give them to you to look pretty, so look at a little hard on it, and this is what the church gave you. <laughs> and then they're there for a purpose. And the purpose is so that you'll write the word down and get to put them in your heart. Amen? Pull out your smartphone. <laughs> for yourself, for your family, for the church, and society. Now, if you start praying for yourself, you'll see a whole lot of stuff you can pray for. <laughs> Am I right about that? <laughs> and then you start praying for your family, you see a whole lot of people you can pray for. And you'll see the, 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 the blessings of God, how he'll start turning your family's heart. Amen. Because you're the priest. Yeah, I'm a witness. Yes. I'm a witness. You're the priest. Yes. I'm a witness. Yes. Then if you start praying for what? The church. You'll see the church turn around. Amen. 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 And then if you pray for society, revival Amen. will come. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Lives will be changed. Power. We're here to change and affect our world for Christ. Right. Please read the next verse, please. Verse 7. If ye had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father as it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Listen to that. Your relatives should know who you really are. Have I been so long time with you and you still don't know who I am? Is that, could that be is because our relationship through prayer is not right with God? Come on. Why? There should, you should have a, a place to pray and a time to pray. Yes. Hear that? Yes. You should have a place to pray and a time to pray. There's a place where you can just be all by yourself, and then there's a time that you can pray. Amen? Yeah. Praise God, ain't that right, Nick? There you go, that's my man, that's my son. I'm taking him from Earl. Ain't that right, Earl? <laughs> Praise God. Let's go on to the next verse. He that have seen me have seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Wow, see that? So that's the challenge that we have. We got to also speak it and do it. It says for the very word and for the very works. Believe it because only the Father can give that anointing. Only the 
Father can commission you. Yeah. Only the Father can gift you. Yeah. Only the Father can give you a word of wisdom. Yes. Yes. Now, I, I thank God because he's bringing this back into my life. And, and I thank God for it. There was a person here today. I said, go get this person because I have a word for them. And God gave me the word, and, and the person agreed that this is what God wants for their life. Amen. I mean, I remember years ago, I used to do that all the time. I just call people out, give them a word, and tell them this is wrong with you, this is going on. And God is bringing that back afresh because this is another season. We are in our season now, and you don't want to miss your season because if you miss your season, you won't reap a harvest. The harvest is already right, but then we need some pickers. We need somebody to go out and pick the apple tree. Yes. Yes. Somebody yes. to pick the orange tree because all the fruit is different. Yes. You may have to go to Timbuktu oh, or a shooting gallery to go get somebody out. Right. But how can you do that if you don't have a relationship through prayer with God yes. to receive the revelation and empowerment to go into a hellhole? Come on. Like Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Amanda, all those guys are Daniel, who was one of the lions then? Yeah. He's out in action. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And because of his uh Daniel's prayer life, he was able to affect the king and win a country for God. Amen. One person. Mm -hmm. Moses was able to deliver millions of people. Yes, yes. Wow. If he can do it. You can do it too. Yes. Amen. I'm believing that you will be able to touch your family Amen. and save your neighborhood. That's right. That your house will yes. become a house of prayer for all people. Yes. And people will run to one South Canary way and say, what must I do to be saved? Yes. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. That's right. Thank you, Lord, for that experience. <laughs> See, you gotta, you gotta put power man on the word of God. The you know, only way that you can do that is through the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. How do I know that? Ask the, uh, uh, I forget the person, but in, uh, at the book of Acts, the person was saying, Paul, I want the same anointing you have. You got to get go get it for yourself, Paul. I ain't giving you nothing. Mm -hmm. Paul can't give it away. It's not his to give away. Right. And furthermore, he's walking the truth. He's not going to give it to somebody going to use it for what? Self gain? Yeah. So, Amen. So the guy went out and thought he had it and said, jumped on the jumped on the demon and said, Come out, come out, come out. And he said, Paul, I know. <laughs> Jesus, I know. But who are you? Why did he say that? It's because the person didn't have a relationship with Jesus. Right. And that relationship, and that's all, that's the reason why God sent his son. That's the reason why God made man, was so that he could be in a relationship, and so that he could have heaven on earth. What, so we're supposed to have what? Heaven on earth. Now, well, how can you say that, Pastor? Because after I die, I go to heaven. No, heaven's in you right now. That's right. And he says in, in uh, Matthew, the 16th chapter, or the 18th, 16th chapter, he says... Giving you the keys. You can go in and out of heaven and get whatever you want, whatever you buy, whatever you want, shall be done. That's Amen. The word. That's the word. You cannot yes. have the power to change this world. Why? Because God owns everything. Whether it's Donald Trump, you can speak to him. Mm -hmm. If God tells you to speak to him, speak to him. That's right. He's a millionaire. I don't know. He's saying that you trust your feelings and your emotions more than you trust what God says. If God tells me to go and tell the mayor or whoever to do so and so, I'm going to do it. Whether they like it or not. That's right. Because you're not going to stop me from getting my blessing. Right. And that's the problem. It's not when you're in our own prisons. We need to pray to get out. But if we need to pray, dude, we need yeah. to pray to get yeah. out. Please pray. Amen. Please read. What verse you got now? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, 
the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. Now listen to what he said. He said that. Now listen to the very next verse that he says. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Do, do you understand that? Do, do you really understand that? That what he's saying is that, that he's given us a great commission. And then he said, here's the, here's the way to do it. You put a, a command on the will and the word of God because God does not lie. Right. Right. Wow. And, the will not return and he will do what he promises. What he says he will do. So that the Father may be glorified in the, the Son. Son. Right. Amen. God will never deny his Son. And guess who we are? That's we are right. the sons of God. Washed with pure water, 
Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Yes. For he is faithful that promises. Yes. You must not lose your profession of faith. That's right. You must hold fast to it with confidence. Mm -hmm. When you go boldly but reverently to the throne of grace, knowing that God will answer you. Yes. Knowing that no matter what I'm going through, God has final say so. Yes. What the verse before that say? Read it, please. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance. True heart. Fully persuaded. Go ahead. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Whoa. Cleansed your mind. Gave you his mind. Mm -hmm. If you got a Bible or on, a smartphone or an iPad, hold it up in the air. That's your pure conscience. Hallelujah. It's the word of God. Yes. It has a word for everything you're going through. Oh my God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's good. And then when you get that clear conscience, profess it. Yes. Hold fast to the profession, the confession of your faith. That's good. Without wavering or doubting. Mm -hmm. Hold up. Till you change come. Yes. Please read. Let us Verse 23, hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful, that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Uh, so in other words, you know how to do the job. But you're to make sure that that person excels in what you're doing or what you're trying to teach them to do. You're to lay down your notability and do it. And I have to do that all the time as a pastor because I, you know what, I know how to do this. But my, my, like here, my son Nick, right? Ain't that right Nick? He's become my right hand man in moving all this equipment. Praise the Lord. I can say Nick, I said this is the way you do it. The next thing you know, he's doing it. But then he'll humble himself and say, oh, is that what you wanted? Oh, that's nice. Whatever I ask of him, he does. Why? He's taking on my nature. He's taking on what I passed on to him, and now he's doing it. There'll be a day that I don't have to do this anymore because he'll do it. Amen. I'm so yes. proud of him. I'm so happy. Yes. And then I call his wife and make sure Nick knows that he's supposed to be. And you know what? I roll up here about... Ten five or ten minutes to nine, he's well, there waiting for me. That's a beautiful play. God bless. That's beautiful. He's there waiting for. Yeah. Thank you for the help. Ain't late. He's on time. Glory. Thank you, Lord, for the help. Ty. The day before, he says, "Pack the word bag. Everything packed. I got everything out we need. Is at the door." What a blessing. What a blessing. Man. God bless him. Oh, we got this pack. Send it out. Yes. Commitment you, to the will of God, the purpose of God for revival. Yes. To change and affect people's lives. Yes. And they didn't just do that because they want. They do it because they're submissive to the will of God. Amen. They heard from God. These are, 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 are fresh young people. And we do have some committed older people, too. I'm just using these as an example. So don't no, say, well, why did you say this about me, Pastor? I hear y'all talking now, right now. <laughs> Get rid of that spirit. Get rid of that spirit. Amen. But we, we love you. I'm just using these as an example because, in fact, that's what we all should be doing. Old and young, we need to put our hand to the plow. And the only way that we want to get revelation of that is through prayer. But here's the one thing that God said, no matter what, whether I get rec rec uh, recognized or not, we need to do this. 1 Samuel 12, 23, please. And, um, uh, Ty, you really touched me today, man, because you hit my scripture today. Amen. Uh, the Lord stated that he would be the house of prayer for all people. Amen. I said, that's it. I'm right on. Praise God. First Samuel 12, 23. First Samuel 12, 23. 
Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, that I will teach you the good and the right way. Amen. So whether I did something wrong or said something wrong, but I didn't recognize you, I will not cease praying for you. Amen. Go together. Yes. So we can fulfill the will of God for our lives. Amen. 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 Now, final text for me. I said, you know, let the people, I just want to do what God said. Matthew 4. And I'll just quote it. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Jesus told him. The devil that tempted him and things. He said, For it is written, Thou shalt not attempt the Lord thy God. How many of y'all feed your natural body? Why do you feed? Or just to, to, to sustain it. To get what? Energy. Amen? So if you don't feed your body, you do what? You get sick. Start to lose weight and all the rest of those things. Your body starts to become malnourished. Wow. So God is trying to tell us something here. No matter what's going on on the outside, if you feed your spirit, you'll be able to handle everything that's going on. Amen. Amen. Your spirit man can go no further than what you feed. And then what you see in the word of God that you will do. Right? I, I used this demonstration many years ago. Sometimes it still pops up. If I have a $500 bill or a $100 bill in my pocket, what would you say to me? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> is it good for you? No, I'm telling you, what if I say I got $10,000 in my pocket? <laughs> How many of you all would want to see it? Yes. You know why? Because seeing is what? Believing. But God said, Blessed is the man that has not seen but yet believes. <laughs> so that's what we're trying to bring you to at this point is the place that you believe God, Amen. even though that you don't see it. Why? Because it's so significant, so important in the life, in your life, in the life of your family, right. in the life of the church, yes. in the life of your community. Because it's you that will, that God will use to change and affect your world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let me pray this prayer with you. Amen. I didn't even get to, to my text today, but we'll, we'll get when we come back into the pulpit, we'll get to that. Amen? Amen. Let's stand to our feet as we pray. Yeah, we're going to do it. We need to do this. Uh, we set all the service things aside so that we can come and stay in the spirit. Amen. That, that can be done last. Amen. I want you all to pray with me too when I pray this, right? Help me just help close your eyes and just receive it as God gives it. Father God, Father God, this day, this day, I release, I release words of faith, words of faith into the earth, into the earth, spiritual, spiritual seed, spiritual seed that bring both. And bring both a spiritual harvest, a spiritual harvest, and natural, natural, and physical, and physical manifestations, manifestations into my life, into my life, to my family, to my, family, to my church, to my church and, society. and society. I will not, I will not allow my soul, allow my soul to be cast down. To be cast down. If I put my hope, if I put my hope and trust, and trust in you. In you, I'm above. I'm above. Only and not the knee. I'm the head, I'm the head. And not the tail. Not the tail. I'm, blessed. I'm blessed. Coming in. Coming in. Blessed. blessed. Going, out. Going out. I am one spirit. I am one spirit. With God. With God. And I abide. And I abide. In Him. In Him. Always. Always. I have the mind. 
mind of Jesus and the wisdom of God. Just wait. 